Hey guys, what's up? This is Zari here to give you a deck profile on my Madolches. So, starting off, 40 card build, standard, 15 card extra deck. I do not have a side deck yet, that is a fresh install of Dev Pro. But I'll recommend some good side stuff at the end of the video. Anyways, starting off, just the most obvious choices. Oh, and keep in mind, this is a post Primal Origin build, so we do have Angelion here. Anyways, starting off with the core. Three Magellines, because standard, she's our searcher, she rounds out our hand. She is our damn near perfect floater, I mean, the only way she'd be better if she has a wind- if she had a wind-up rabbit effect in there. That would, uh... That would piss a lot of people off. Okay. Next off. Three Angeli. Now, in the Madolce communities I've seen, there's been a lot of debate as to how many to run between two and three. And whoever says two needs to shut the hell up. Suffice to say, drawing multiples of these of these is not a bad thing. She makes people battle them. You, I mean, she trolls boxers. She trolls burning knucklers. Sorry, I'm battling boxers. It's like she's halfway towards being a mech equipped engineer on her own. That's more than enough to warrant her being ran at three. And she's hoot cake fodder. So of course the combination with she's essentially a free plus three. Well, plus two, actually. Tribute still for the hoot, so that evens out. Into a gelato. Into whatever spell or trap we want. It's... it's nice. And, uh, the clause that shuffles the monster back in, I mean, that's very non-effectual. I mean, it happens rarely. Most of the time you'll use the monster summoned by Angeli as an exceed fodder. Or, on the other hand, if not, then more than likely you'd have gone for Ticket here. Which, after sending the hoot cake back, will net you a free card anyways. You can just grab another Angeli. But, uh, it's nice. Hmm. Moving on. Two gelatos. It's mostly standard. There's a lot of debate between two and three as well. And my argument for two, a lot of people's argument for two is, uh, you, don't, you never want this thing in hand. It... This, you just don't. His effect is reliant on special summoning, which most of the time you'll haul off with hoot cake here. It's slightly alleviated in having a Mew Fuel in hand. But, uh, typically you want to save that Mew Fuel if you ever draw it for, you know, your whole Levier slash Invoker TRMSU play, which I'll explain soon enough. Just for those of you looking to get into the deck. Looks, uh, Mew Fuel at one. A lot of people run it at two, some even three. But, given. Madolches as a whole, their innate search ability for themselves, their recycling ability, you only need one. I mean, there's an entire combo where you can just recycle the thing with Angeli, have both of them in hand, have a TR, a Masu, and Levier on the field, it's just insane. We do not need more than one Mufio, and we need a lot more space for a little bit more Madolche support and trap cards. Now Madolche Babble, this is definitely a tech option, he should not be considered part of the core, but he does help getting over a lot of nasty things. I mean, Black Wings, Bujins without Turtle and Grave, so maybe the early game. Maybe they went for a more offensive approach after they summoned Yamato, got a crane in hand. It's rare to see that, but, eh. Uh, what else, what else? Oh, I'll get back to that. And, bit, bit of a harder to justify tech, at least pre and jelly. But uh, post Angeli Madolce Pudding Cess definitely shines a lot more. And uh, this is why. Angeli, for the duration of her effect, makes the monster she summons immune to destruction by battle. So, keeping this in mind, if you summon her, she's two free pumps right offhand. That's already pretty good. And she's still a 1000 beater, but uh. So, not a beater at all, but. If you can clear the grave in that time, then. Moot point 1800 beater. And uh, furthering this discussion, um, there's a lot of things. Madolches are a really easy deck to decide against. There's a lot of common hate against them. Um, Rivalry of the Warlords, for one. Skill Drain. Stygian Dirge, to a lesser extent. You know, stopping them to be Arimisu plays. People are scared to death of her. But, uh. Hmm. Kaiser Coliseum, in the case you're fighting Bujins. And the list goes on, and. 
the problem can very much be mitigated with a combination of Madolce Pudding Sis, Summon by Angeli, usually, and a Forbidden Lance, just in case of the skill drain. So that's my justification. She just she shines a lot more post Primal Origin. Of course, whether or not she'll be used widely will yet will be yet to be seen. Simply because it'll be a new format, we can't predict what will happen. That's part of the reason for lack of a side deck, but uh, just because I don't know what we're going into then. And um, off picks, not Medulce stuff. We have here Effect Veiler, just because standard. It's gonna be a lot stronger this meta. I mean. Sided out against Spoochins, but aside from that, I mean. Yeah. And Banisher of the Radiance. Um, this one, a lot of people are probably going to get pissed off on, but um, Banisher of the Radiance is level 3, so, seed capabilities. With, of course, our, you know, staple 3s. And, not the biggest threat, 1600, but the goal here is for the effect, and a lot of people are going to get pissed on this one. Like I said, um, banishes any card sent to the graveyard instead of sending it to the graveyard so just looking at what we'll be fighting then mermails are still going to be a thing probably so a whole bunch of sent to the grave the proc effects Bujins send everything in their mother to the grave firefist cannot operate with him on the field i mean yeah they just can't really I mean, they have to get over the thing at which point i mean you know you have battle protection usually Hmm. Uh, other options. I believe Kalut has to be sent to the grave. Um, Infernities, if you open with this thing first turn, I mean, they have to attack over it with an Archfiend. Unless it's the Synchro variant, but I mean, either way, they're losing cards they could be using. Then again, they're always losing cards, but I mean, they're losing their things to support them. I mean, if they don't have targets in Grave because of this thing, and they summon a Necromancer, I mean, what the fuck are they gonna do, you know? So, uh, yeah. That is the whole thing there. That's what I said. There's a lot of versatile things you can do with Banisher. I mean, you can compulsive material. and you can just play around this thing. You can, uh, can we? Yeah, you can target it with Phoenix Chain just to mitigate it for a time if you need to. It's kind of a desperation move, but it is there, just in case you want to make the Angeli play. Which is definitely viable, I mean, you have a banish around the field, you chain it, summon an Angeli, tributed to have the Grave Fodder, assuming you didn't have it before, go into a Hoot, banish the Angeli, bring out a Gelato, overlay these two into a Levier, um, detach the Hoot, special summon the uh, Angeli from, you know, the Banish Zone, get a Tiari Misu, I mean, that's just one example. And for all the ways banish or trolls at the decks, I mean, I think it's certainly justifiable. We've learned the spells. We have a 10 count. So, Dark Hole, standard. 3 MST, because, again, standard. Book of Moon, because Failure's going to be coming back. Even this format. I'm pretty sure he's going to be a mainstay of the next. Unless, of course, Bujins become the next dragon somehow. I mean, just because Valor doesn't hit Yamato. That's the justification for sending him out against Bujins. Because Valor only lasts until the end phase, and Yamato procs during the end phase. So, they're just going to get their ball rolling no matter what, I mean. Best justification for keeping it is you can hit their exceeds. Say they have a turtle in hand, they summon it alongside a Yamato, make a uh, Susanoo. In which case, just veil the thing right off. Because if they detach the turtle, I mean, and you veil it, they can just use the turtle at that point. So, you have to veil the thing as soon as it's summoned. But, um, yeah. Just more justification in removing it, I think. Two Forbidden Lands, because it just trolls the ever-living hell out of things. I mean, people don't see it coming. I mean, they really just don't. You can use it as a bluff card, save some better background. Any spell can be used as a bluff card. I bluff with shit all the time, but... Just because the people I play around do blindly MST a lot, and kind of hope they don't hit the good stuff. I should probably make a habit of setting these things and waiting a turn, though. Sometimes I can't wait. I have to be prepared. Anyways. Uh... Single Madolce ticket because it's just recycl recyclable. That and only one can be used per turn. One effect of Madolce ticket can be used per turn. It's not factory, so can't justify seeing more of them. Maybe two, just because it is massive MST bait. 
and a lot of the better middle shape players do run more than one. Sorry, let only run one. Loshi Chateau at two, because again, it is searchable. Hello, Gelato. And recyclable, so... So long as we can keep some semblance of momentum going, we can just recycle this, win the field spell, war without much effort. Middle shape lose at one, because more than one is going to clog. But, um... Opening hand of nothing but Medolce or getting into the late game and having this set thing set prior. I mean, just the spam you can go for with it, it, it it's just insane. Sorry. Um, moving on. Um, staple traps. Bottomless. Solemn. Compulse. Torrential. All standard. Two mirror forces because it's um, indiscriminate. So, they Bujins can turtle it. Um, Fire Fist could preemptively gorilla it, but they only run the damn thing at once, so, I mean, why not? Mermulas won't attack into it, of course. Unless they're really, really bad, I mean. So. Hmm. Moving on. Trap stun. Just because it's trap stun. I mean, you can literally shut down any sort of response the enemy has for a turn. This is a very powerful card. I could, get, I could see it getting hit soon. Maybe down to two. Maybe down to one. Just because the openings it creates are massive. Though, there is a chance we'll be seeing more spell related. You know, monster mitigation, destruction, what have you. In the form of offerings of the doomed and. Well. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Forbidden Lance is still a thing that might become the go to instead of traps if it becomes a trap stun meta. But, um, yeah, there is a new card, Skill Prisoner, coming out in Legacy of the Valiant. Um. Just a bit, I'm already the effects. Nah, I won't. You can look it up. But, just a bit. It's an amazing card. Just. There's a lot of pinpoint monster destruction or effect negation. Just. There's just a lot. I mean, bear. Gorilla. Most Atlantean cards. Uh, who else has effects on target? Well, those are two big decks that'll be out. Big decks. Mm -hmm. And sorry if I seem drowsy. I mean, I'm sure it's shown. It's, it's shown. I just woke up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not to mention it has a pseudo breakthrough skill effect that you can use during either turn. So if you're playing against Fire Fist, for instance, they get two bear pops off. I mean, you can just use this thing succe successively. Stop from popping your shit. Same goes for Grill. This can target any card on the field, so you can keep your spells and traps safe. Save that mirror for us from. A marksman pop, bird dragoons pop, whatever. Save it from a gorilla pop. Oh, and most definitely failure. How could I forget that one? This will stop failure. Because it does not negate the effects of the target, but it negates the effects of monsters that target. So, you can chain it directly to a failure being used, and it'll stop it from taking effect on your monster. Moving on. Phoenix Chain, standard, because um, people are going to be using uh, Exiton Knight. I think it's going to be used a lot more, as opposed to Black Rose now. Slowly but surely, Konami's popping out exceeds are just kind of eclipsing the older playstyles. But, uh, yeah. And the one-off trap hole, because looking at it, there are going to be a few decks that do normal summon, and are reliant on the normal summon. Mostly Fire Fist and Bujins. So, we want to get this early game on Bujins, obviously, but... Yeah. Moving on. Little Chick Queen's here, I'm Isu with two, not three, because... We can just recycle her with a Rogue Chateau, or with Tiara Misu's own effect. If you're looking at this video, you probably know what she does. So, if not, you can just look it up. Silent Honor's Arc Knight, or the better Black Ship of Corn. Just because it has an inherent Maze Stroke effect, even if you can't kick the effect off, I may, may consider nixing Maze Stroke for this thing. Maze Stroke's good and all, but... I'm gonna have Babble for turning things to defense, I mean... Best case, um... I really can't think of a justification for keeping him right now. I'll probably nix him in the future. But, uh, yeah, Shark Knight. Pretty good. Down Magician, because... Another out to um, Rivalry of the Warlords, because we do play Magellines. This is a spellcaster here. They're both spellcasters. So getting out two Magellines is definitely within the realm of possibilities. Making for a 2500 beater. If we can protect, we can push through skill drain plays. 
No skill drain please, sorry, rivalry plays. Going on. Diamond Direwolf, who because Tiramisu is Tiramisu, I mean, we don't always have a middle chain grave, but it's becoming a lot less common through playtesting with Angeli. So I uh, may next him in favor of something else. Ah. Evil Score Mexiton Knight, or Knight Beelzebeth, if you're still going by OCG names. Just because there's it's a rank four deck, I mean, th there's no way we can't justify having this thing. So I'm um, just one over May Stroke, uh, Abyss Dweller, because a lot of proc effects. Um, TG Stun is actually making a resurgence from what I've seen. Um, bring this up because this thing actually saved me against them. They activate during the end phase when the TG monster is destroyed. So just kind of trolled through the battle phase. I'm attacked over two TGs with um. I'm a central auto and a... Yeah. And middle team you feel. Sorry, I almost dropped my mouse. And, uh... Yeah, had one level four left. Um, I think it was a Magellan. I didn't have middle chasing grave at the time, so... Yeah, just went for the obvious choice. You went for Abyss Dweller. Stopped him from getting any more resources in a way. I mean... It's essentially like I minus two'd him. He didn't get to replenish those resources, so I mean... Pseudo Tiara Masu kind of, right there. Uh, Cowboy, just because, obvious game clincher. I was going to remove him, but in the light of the things I'm now seeing that are maybe a little bit more obsolete, looks at Direwolf, looks at Maystroke. May nix him. May nix them as opposed to Cowboy. Just because I have been going into him less and less, but I've been going into these guys less, more. Acid Golem, because simple use against Skill Drain. I mean, you can still special summon when Skill Drain's on the field, and you don't have to detach. Wait. I believe you don't have to detach. I'll look into it later. A little bit foggy. Ghost Trick Alucard, because people just jump their shit at this thing. They'll waste the bottomless on it, they'll waste the compost, they'll waste anything. But uh, if they don't, then I mean, pop anything face down for free. I mean, what's not to love? Leviera, too, because post Aunt Jelly, we're definitely going to make at least one play with Leviera off of him. Off of Aunt Jelly. And, uh,. At two, safe to keep around, because we do become a somewhat spammier deck, as opposed to others. Come and Jelly. And Mech Equipped Engineer. Um, I cannot praise this card enough. In some ways, I think he makes Zen mains obsolete, just because, while we may not get the destruction effect, it's two free turns we essentially have if the opponent can't get him off the field with, say, Banishment, maybe a DD Warrior Lady, or a Compulse, which I mean, we can just bring a mech. Not to mention, he makes plays safe. Just a situation, um, say you have a tour guide from the underworld in hand. Say you're playing tour guide in Badolce, which is a thing. Maybe not post and Shelly, but definitely pre. So, you summon your tour guide, get your tour guide, bring out Engineer. Keep him in attack. Wait to turn. And we turn, they try to attack over Engineer, detach one, save it. Next turn, play Magellan. Magellan. Get a Magellan. Or even get an Angeli. And, uh,. Yeah, so, you're set up for a next turn TR Misu. So, you set your Angeli. Not sorry, you don't set your Angeli. Uh, you end your turn having this new card in hand. Your uh, Engineer still has one material. Your Magellan's an attack. Your Engineer is in defense, mind you. Enemy turn, they see what you're doing. It's an obviously telegraphed play, but it's also a powerful one. I mean, what can they do to stop it? They can nix your last Engineer material. Unless, of course, you have back row to sustain him. Maybe save it for next turn to make an absolutely safe TR Misu. So next turn, assuming you went for Angeli because you have no material, no targets in grave for TR Misu, you play the Angeli. Activate her effect. Send her to the grave, bring out a Gelato. Now, you don't get Gelato's effect because, you know, you don't have a beast on the field. But uh, if you brought out a Hoot Cake, for instance, then you'd have to banish, well, Angeli. And, of course, just bring out Gelato. In which case, you go for the Tiara, but you don't have any plays to make. Because you don't have any targets in Grave. This is, of course, mitigated in a slightly modified play. You tribute the Angeli. Uh, what was it? Go for a Hoot Cake. Special summon off of Hoot Cake using Angeli. A Mew Feel or a Bapple. And go into a uh, Levier. In which case, if you went for Mew, you detach the Mew, and if you have a Chateau up, because this is where you can start recycling 
Mewfiel and Jelly for amazingly stupid combos. And just bring a Tiramisu. And you'll have a targeting grave, probably the Mewfiel if you have a Chateau up, just like I said. And if you do, detach the Angeli, bring both Mew and Jelly back to hand, and the field you now have is an 1800 uh, Mech Equipped Engineer, 1800 Levier, and assuming the field spell is up, 2700 Tiramisu, as well as a way to go through the entire Tiramisu Levier combo through your hand next turn. And with the Mech Equipped on the field, you have even more insurance in that you can proc Tiara's effect twice. That is to say, they get rid of the Levier. I mean, you'll have material in the grave. You can just banish an Angeli next turn, giving you have one in your hand to go off a Levier again if they don't destroy it. And your first Tiramisu is safe, so you might not even have to go through the entire fucking combo. If Chateau is still up, you can just recycle the Angeli. But yeah. He opens up some really nice shit. Rather, protects some really nice shit. And, yeah, sorry, catching my breath. A little bit sick. Invoker. Standard. A little bit, little bit weaker. A little bit less favorable, I should say. Not weaker, per se. Come in, Jelly. But, still good to have. Hmm. So, I wonder how long this has ran on for. Uh, let's see. 21 minutes. Um, okay, I will cut this video here. I'll go into side deck options next time. Uh, this is Ari signing off.